Do you know how many discs Innova has approved through the PDGA? I'll give you a second to guess. They have 166 different molds approved through the PDGA. To put that into perspective, all of Trilogy, so Latitude 64, Inno, or <laughs> Innova, Latitude 64, Dynamic Discs, and Westside combined have about 168 discs approved. And with Innova, that doesn't even include Millennium or Infinite or like their Disc Mania molds that they still haven't released as theirs, doesn't include any of those. And with 166 different discs in their lineup, there's just about no gaps in there. I mean, there was the one gap that the Toro now filled and how they took so long to fill that gap, I don't know, I can't tell you. But that makes you think like, how does Innova still make different discs and different molds when there's really no gaps to speak of? Well, I've got a theory for that. There's two different types of gaps that you can fill in your lineup. One of them being the flight gap, so the gaps of different flights, which Innova has, now that they have the Toro out, I'm pretty sure they have just about every flight out there covered in your bag. And that doesn't include the tilt because the tilt should not be in your bag, so. But the other gap is preference gap. And I think that is where this Innova J sits, for example. When you look at the flight, like it might overlap with a lot of other stuff that they have in their lineup, but in terms of preferences, this brings something new to the table. Because like when you look at the profile, it looks almost identical to the Mako 3, which a lot of Innova throwers throw the Mako 3 because it is a great disc and it is a great mold. But what do you throw as a more stable Mako 3? Like, because the Mako is not overstable or stable at all. Like it'll, it wasn't, won't hold up to winds. It turns up on all your throws. So for people who threw Makos, normally for their more stable stuff, if they wanted to stay with Innova, you could throw like the Rock 3, the Shark 3, like maybe a Lion. I don't know, I haven't thrown a Lion, don't. Maybe a Lion. But they didn't really have much in terms of like this safe feel because a lot of people who threw rock threes for their understable stuff they had pro rock threes or dx rock threes like it is made to be a disc that cycled they have that same feel in the hand but if you throw a mako there's nothing really with the same feel in the hand that's more stable than it some people went outside of innova to find compliments to this so like an emac truth or a buzz or a md3 and we'll talk about those don't worry but in terms of like with your feel, this practically feels like a Mako 3. There are slight differences, like the J has a little micro bead on it, so if you don't like beads, then I don't know, I, st I still think you should give this a shot because it, it, it you can barely feel it. And it is weird because the Mako 3 actually has a higher shoulder or higher parting line height to it, but the way they get the J more stable is that if you look on the underside of the rim here, the Mako 3 is much more rounded on the bottom of the rim here when the J is a little more flat. So that's where it kind of gets its stability. So for those who like maybe don't like the feel of the Rock 3 or they want something similar feeling to the Mako 3, that is why Innova made the J to have that similar feel in the hand. Now, how does it fly compared to the Rock 3? Well, it is similar to it kind of Let's talk. But yeah, with the Rock 3, it is definitely, so the Rock 3 is definitely more overstable than the J. I will give you that. But the J, it, it doesn't turn for you at all, at least, at least when there's no wind. There wasn't very much wind today, so I couldn't really test against the wind. But they both won't turn for you at all. The difference comes with the fade. So the Rock 3 definitely fades more than the J. The J almost has like a forward pushing fade like it still has a good fade to it a pretty decent fade but it's definitely a little straighter of a fade than the rock three is but the j almost feels effortless when you throw it when the rock three you kind of have to put a little more power like the rock three will definitely definitely get you to where you want to go but the j just it just seems effortless distance with it but also i don't know if you knew noticed got some beanies just got those in. Those should be going out today or tomorrow if you pre-ordered. And we have some extras in the site, so check it out. Sorry, that was that was weird. But yeah, 
link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, for those who didn't throw a Rock 3 and they use more of like an MD3 or a Buzz type disc, I would say that, well, first off with the MD3, the MD3 is actually pretty darn stable out of the box. The J is not, it just doesn't have the finish of it. The MD3 definitely has like, it can handle a lot more power and fly further when you put it. I'll have more power because it has more stability. It can hold that, just, it can handle more power. But the J, like, it just has a lot more glide than the MD3 and just doesn't have as much of a finish. Now the MD3 might be better in the winds, but the, the J definitely has a good amount of stability like when you throw it with no wind, like it's not, it's not gonna turn for you at all. It might be a little touchier for if you throw it poorly, like if you have a little bit of off axis torque, uh, then the MD3 would mask that a lot better. But the MD3 also feels bigger and bulkier than the J. The J definitely feels very, very comfortable in the hand and very nice, it's a nice safe shape. It does have flashing, like Innova has. It has a good amount of flashing on it, but it's not nothing to be that concerned about. But with the Buzz, like it's it's actually really close to the Buzz. Now the Buzz, in my opinion, has less glide, and so it's a little bit harder to get in a good distance on it, but that's honestly why I kind of like the Buzz. It doesn't have as much glide. I feel like I have more control over it. The J definitely has the glide and the effortless distance on it, but it still has a good amount of stability, I would say. Then with the Emac Truth, it kind of gets interesting. So with the Emac Truth, it's definitely, similar in the sense that it just the, the emac truth just goes for days if you throw the emac truth you know and it has like a similar finish to the emac truth honestly like it's very similar forward pushing forward pushing forward pushing fade but the difference is the emac truth will turn for you like if you put power on it at least like a new lucid truth emac truth it'll turn for you a little bit and it won't hold up to wind so you need a Lucid X version of that to hold up to wind. The J, it doesn't turn for you. Like the only reason it'll turn for you is if you have bad form, then it will turn for you. But if you throw it clean, like it can handle a good amount of power without turning. When the Emac Truth, like it's made to like hyzer flip. Again, with that fade, it is very similar to the fade on the J. Like forward finishing, a little bit of fade, like 1.5 to two fade would be like an accurate number for it, which I think they're both two, I wanna say, but. Like honestly, it's just the perfect complement to the Mako 3. If you throw Mako 3s and you're wanting a more stable one, then the J is it. Like it feels practically the same in the hand and it just flies so beautifully. You can handle the power, won't turn for you. Now if Innova made this in a Halo plastic, I think it's it's game over. Innova killed it with this one. Um, how they did that, I don't know, because they have 166 molds and how they found something that fits into the lineup to give something new to players that's this good. It's witchcraft, man. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.